Don't get distracted, Kodak. I'll call you tonight. Bye, kisses. Arnold sent an air kiss to the screen of his cell phone and smiled. One would have thought that he, a bearded man weighing 120 kilograms, would be so sentimental. All over the cab of the truck were pictures of children. He was humbled by their drawings, their fake ones, their voiceovers. On a voyage, he tried to load himself up with work as much as possible, trying to think less about home. But sometimes, if there was a chance to get to a good store, he, with a longing in his chest, wandered through the halls, looking for gifts for them. How quickly they grow up, and he is far away. Each time he arrived, he met more and more grown-up children. How much was he missing out, hoping to provide them with a carefree childhood? But the money paid good money, the kind you couldn't make in their town. He'd met Martha when he'd finally decided he wasn't going to start a family. He couldn't make it work, no matter how hard he tried. And he'd met some nice girls, but it wasn't the same. His mother often sighed, hinting at grandchildren, and once even ran to a fortune teller. What this girl struck the hardened bachelor? Unknown. When she, laughing, said that she had two children, he did not believe. Stylish, bright, well-groomed and two kids. He looked at her, talked to her as a friend, texted and called her. Attracted, intrigued, made him dream. On his next visit, Arnold had the courage to ask her out on a date. Exactly on a date, not just to talk. And she reopened before him from a different side tender, vulnerable, sensitive. He knew that her ex-husband was imprisoned for a terrible crime. There were no alimony, because the girl deprived her father of parental rights. Then he was surprised why. That's their father. It's not their father. A father would think twice before getting involved in something like this. And what? The court took your side. Arnold asked in surprise. Yes. Especially since he didn't even write to them, Martha replied. The subject was closed. He began to participate in the life of their family, becoming more and more attached. Unobtrusively began to bring gifts from flights and on the children, and then did not even realize how he began to live with them. After the woman became pregnant, he did not doubt for a second. Weddings played modest, just signed. After all, it was necessary to repair her apartment. It is not the case to live in such conditions. His apartment decided to rent while saving money for the account of the common child. Sometimes they joked that they had no time to fight. They rarely see each other, so why waste their emotions on nerves and relationship disputes? For almost 10 years of marriage, they had a few serious clashes, but thanks to Martha's worldly wisdom, they safely passed the crisis. And now there was no sign of trouble. They chatted. The man calmly began to prepare dinner. And then his wife called again, sweetie, something laptop hangs. Do not know what could be the matter? I do not know, maybe you need to clean? Said Arnold. How? She asked. Sometimes he pardoned her childish defenselessness and directness. Although she worked as an economist, but she did not know anything about technology. Sometimes Arnold laughed when he imagined how the programmers were torturing her at work. He connected remotely to her laptop, clicked programs. He wasn't an expert himself, but he didn't want to admit his helplessness. Machine clicking all over the place, he came across the astrologer file. Wow, his wife was into astrology. That was already interesting. And he clicked play, not realizing that it would completely change his life. For almost two hours, he listened to the recording, gradually coming to shock. His wife was in an online counseling session, so all he saw was the astrologer. The recording for what? Probably a demand from someone involved. The pretty woman first talked at length about the influence of the planets, some karmic debts. He sometimes laughed, listening to this nonsense having dinner and wondering whether to forbid his wife to suffer such nonsense. 
But then the woman started a topic about bands, about relations with her husband and asked him the date of his birth May 12, 2000, answered Martha to the astrologer. Is it the husband? It was evident that the woman was a little confused about the answer. After all, his spouse was closer to 40 years old. And even despite the constant trips to the beautician, the age could be easily read. The astrologer interrogated. Is it you who said the date of birth of your son? Arnold froze. Now the counseling was getting more interesting. Martha's children were 15 and 17, and the daughter they shared was 9 years old. And he remembered exactly when their birthdays were. His heart thumped in his chest and froze. Time stretched agonizingly slow. And then his beloved wife said, This is my friend. A friend? The astrologer clarified. Understand, I do not know what not to do. I have three children, a loving husband, and I'm torn. He is constantly away, does not pay attention to me. I met John by accident. Who's 22? The astrologer asked. You know, he made me feel like a woman. And he's asking me to marry him. And I'd like your advice on what I should do. Now Arnold was watching the tape in a detached way. It seemed to him that it was just someone's movie. He couldn't see his wife's face, but he could see the astrologer's expression. It was obvious that she was uncomfortable with the whole thing. She grimaced and asked again for her husband's date of birth. You know, your spouse has an open fertility planet. Meaning? Meaning that if you divorce, he'll still have children. But you don't? Yeah, well, I have a problem with that. So he'll have a family, kids? And cash flow. You don't have any. Yes, my husband provides for us. So you think it's better to stay with your husband? But John even introduced me to his parents. The astrologer couldn't help herself and asked with barely concealed irony with parents when introduced. You told them how old you are and that you were married with three children. Marta instantly jumped up. You have no right to judge me. What am I paying you money for? Just tell me who I should stay with. I have no right to make those decisions. Just saying you will have no more children and no more cash flow. It's your right to decide. She said something else, changing the subject. She talked about children, about mental health, about karmic debts. Sometimes the man felt like he was watching from the sidelines. Sighing, he examined himself critically belly, loose, unshaven. Well, yes, and there is a young and fit body. How to restrain oneself, especially when one's husband has been away for months, only transferring money. He closed the file and looked at the date of creation. A month ago. So Martha had made the decision. Logically, why take the risk when there's a stupid naive husband? And it wasn't a given that John would actually get married. Better a bird in the hand than a crane in the sky. Arnold called his wife. Martha didn't pick up for a long time. And when she did, her voice was agitated. Before, he didn't pay attention to all sorts of little things. Sometimes she's unavailable. Sometimes she doesn't pick up. Sometimes she hangs up. She had work kids. Now the puzzles were coming together. What's up? I'm still a little busy. The kids are out visiting, so I thought I'd take a bath. How's the laptop? Is it done? Give my stuff. My parents are picking it up tomorrow. I'll file for divorce myself. Thanks for everything. I'll talk to the kids later. What's wrong? Arnold! Nothing replied the husband. Did you cheat on me? Did you get a woman? Martha's tone became hysterical. She didn't want to believe what he was saying. Hello, John, Arnold said. There was a long silence. And then the woman started talking, mixing up words, stammering and getting more and more frightened. You've got it all wrong. I don't know who or what told you, but it was only to make us quarrel. I love you more than life. And this guy is just an acquaintance from work. 
You know there were some jealous people who saw us once in town and told lies. And he and I met by chance. She yelled something else into the phone receiver, but he hung up. The screen lit up and went out, voice messages came in, his wife called and wrote something. When the kids started calling, he answered them dryly that mom had another one, and it was better this way. Maybe I shouldn't have let them in on such sordid details, but I couldn't keep quiet. Several months passed. The court gave three months for reconciliation, but Arnold didn't care. He didn't care about the stamp in his passport. He moved back into his apartment, called his kids. Despite his hatred of Martha, his love for his children remained unchanged. The woman did not file for child support, knowing full well that she would get more. They discussed the matter and agreed on a fixed amount. Every time, taking the children to visit, he stumbled upon her wild desire to talk, to discuss something and make peace. Hate for her gradually turned into indifference, and now he did not care about this woman. What do you think, dear viewers? Did Arnold do the right thing? Or is cheating worth forgiving?